As a partial U.S. government shutdown enters 25th day, President Donald Trump has rejected fellow Republican Lindsey Graham's proposal to reopen the government. Lindsey Graham, a South Carolina Republican, publicly floated the idea during an interview with a U.S. TV channel. U.S. President Donald Trump has denied media reports regarding the Russia investigation and his meetings with Russian President Vladimir Putin, saying he never worked for Russia and did not know anything about his interpreter's notes. Now, Trump, speaking at the White House before departing for New Orleans, said a Washington Post report that he had concealed details about his meetings with Putin and confiscated his interpreter's notes was false. The New York Times also reported that the FBI was investigating whether Trump has been working on behalf of Russia. Now, more than 30,000 Los Angeles teachers demanding higher pay walked off the job in the second largest U.S. school system, leaving hundreds of thousands of students in limbo. Over 600,000 students at some 900 campuses in the Los Angeles County School District were met by teachers carrying picket signs and rallying in the rain for higher salaries. Increased staff and some smaller classes and no formal talks were held with authorities. Dashing hopes of an 11th hour deal between the teachers, union and the school district. <laughs> British Prime Minister Theresa May has urged lawmakers to take a second look at her deal to leave the European Union a last-ditch effort to win over a parliament that looks set to reject the agreement. The fate of the UK's March 29 exit from the EU is in the balance as Parliament is widely expected to vote against the May's deal on Tuesday, opening up outcomes ranging from a disorderly divorce to reversing Brexit. May also warned Parliament it, uh, it risked the breakup of the UK if it voted against the agreement. Now, the head of the Libya's internationally recognized parliament has said that Tripoli should press ahead with the national elections, even if voters reject a draft constitution planned referendum. The UN and Western powers hope Libya will hold its national election by June after holding a referendum on a constitutional framework to chart a way out of the conflict, which stems from the overthrowing of Gaddafi in 2011. The U.S. State Department has criticized Lebanon's Iran-backed Hezbollah group for digging tunnels into Israel and stockpiling rockets as Washington steps up efforts to isolate the Iran. In recent weeks, Israeli forces uncovered tunnels they said were dug by Hezbollah and Lebanon complained about uh, Israel's construction of a barrier along disputed parts of the border. A freelance photojournalist has been shot in the knee by a defensive bullet launcher during a Yellow West protest in France. The journalist captured the sequence of events on his GoPro, which shows him falling and then subsequently being held by colleagues and demonstrators. <laughs> Emergency services were still not in force in Bavaria as continued heavy snowfall ensured the continued threat of avalanches. Germany's interior minister visited the hard hit area as where more than 200 police joined the army and other emergency services in snow clearing work. Some 1,400 members of the German Civil Protection Agency joined forces with firefighters and soldiers to work against the avalanches. A 
unusually heavy snowfall is expected to continue in parts of Austria after last week's heavy snow raised avalanche warning levels and cut off local roads last week. Last week, after three meters of snow, more than the entire average monthly amount in January triggered avalanche warnings in Austria's alpine regions. Firefighters and locals could be seen cleaning up the towns in central Austria as forecasts say more snow is on the way this week. At least four people were killed and more than 50 wounded when a bomb-laden car blew up near a high-security compound in the Afghan capital, Kabul. An Afghan government security source said the blast occurred on Jalalabad Road in eastern Kabul near the Green Village compound, which is home to several international companies and charities. Police spokesman said that a vehicle full of explosives had detonated, triggering a massive blast. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the bombing. The Green Village has come under Islamist militant attack in the past. Russian diamond giant El Rosa has set up a subsidiary in Zimbabwe to begin mining operations there more than two years after it shelved plans to expand into the country. El Rosa, the world's largest diamond producer by output, started conducting geological exploration in Zimbabwe in 2013 but dropped the licenses it held there in 2016 due to a reform of the country's diamond industry. Zimbabwe has opened a small window for foreign companies to participate in its diamond industry to maximize exploration. France has agreed to a loan of 1 billion euros for reconstruction in Iraq after the 2014-2017 battle to defeat the ISIS terrorists. The announcement was made by French Foreign Minister after a meeting with his Iraqi counterpart in Baghdad. Jordan's King Abdullah and the foreign ministers of France and Iran made separate visits on Monday to Iraq, an ally of Tehran amid U.S. attempts to rally allies against the Islamic Republic as Washington starts withdrawing troops from neighboring Syria. Jordan's King Abdullah has visited Baghdad for his first visit since 2008, the latest in a flurry of diplomatic activity in Iraq where the U.S hopes to counter a growing Iranian influence. King Abdullah's visit comes a week after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo trip as part of a tour of the Middle East meant to rally Arab allies against Tehran and reassure them over a planned U.S. troop withdrawal from Syria. The Indian ambassador to the U.S. Harsha Shringla has presented his credentials to U.S. President Donald Trump at the White House. Mr. Shringla succeeds Naftej Sarna, who retired on December 31st. Now, striking Greek teachers clash with police in Athens for the second time in under a week during a rally in protest over plans by the government to change hiring procedures. The violence broke out when protesting teachers who are on a 24-hour strike try to break a police cordon next to the parliament. Some, some of the protesters hurled stones at police who responded with tear gas. More than 3,000 teachers concerned over job security marched to the country's parliament, building, banging drums and chanting, We are the only opposition. Spanish emergency services worked to rescue a toddler that fell down a groundwater prospecting well. A Spanish newspaper said the two-year-old boy was seen falling into the 25 centimeters wide and around 100 meters deep well when the family was taking a stroll through a private estate in Totalan, Malaga in the south of Spain.
China has expressed stern opposition to participation by the U.S. and other countries in Taiwan's submarine production project. China's foreign ministry spokeswoman has blamed the U.S. for permitting some of its military enterprises to export technology to help build Taiwan submarines. Now, companies from the U.S., Europe, Japan and India have reportedly demonstrated their interest in taking part in the project. Water cannons are being used to clean the air in streets in Bangkok as Thai authorities handed out masks in an effort to combat air pollution. The level of hazardous dust particles known as PM2.5 has exceeded the safe level in 30 of 50 Bangkok districts for days. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the multiple projects and a new railway line during his Odisha visit. Today, he will also lay the foundation stone for the permanent building at Kindre Vidyale in Sonapur. Prayagraj City, Uttar Pradesh is hosting the first Shahi Snan of the 2019 Ardh Kumbh. The Shahi Snan is witnessing unprecedented crowds coming in from across the country. The Kumbh would continue for the next 55 days till March 10th in a bid to make the fairgrounds open defecation free. Authorities in Prayagraj have built over 100,000 toilets for pilgrims attending the Kumbh. The authorities have installed over 50 reverse osmosis water ATMs as well. Naga Sadhu smeared in ash printed loincloth are the most popular sightings at the Kumbh Fair. The hermits are gathered in tents where they are quite often joined by devotees from all over the world. Some visit the Chillam smoking holy men for spiritual guidance while some are there simply to witness an unconventional experience. Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad was admitted to All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Delhi last evening. The Minister of Law and Justice is admitted in the Pulmonary Medicine Department for sinus treatment. The Supreme Court has issued notice to the centre seeking its response on multiple petitions challenging Home Ministry's order authorising security and intelligence agencies to snoop on all computers. The Home Ministry's December 20th order authorised 10 central agencies including the Intelligence Bureau, Enforcement Directorate, Central Bureau of Investigation to intercept, monitor and decrypt any information generated, transmitted, received or stored in any computer. The Bulan Shahir District Administration has invoked the National Security Act against seven people arrested in connection with the alleged cow slaughtering incident in Siana Tehsil last month. The cattle carcasses were found strewn in the fields outside the village in Siana on December 3rd after which a mob went on the rampage, attacking the local police, post and killing Inspector Subodh Kumar Singh. 